I'm Laurel and I'm a designer here at Serve. Welcome to part two of our Zero to Website series. Now that you have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, how a website works, and you have foundation downloaded onto your computer, we're going to go over the foundation framework. If you missed last week's lesson, you can watch it right there. So, frameworks are great because they come with a boilerplate, a CSS reset, a grid, and pre-built UI components. For this lesson, we'll go over the foundation file structure, how to add pages, how to override our pre-made CSS, and some great resources to help you code faster. Let's dive right in. So what's in the box? What's in the box? First, we'll explain how the files are structured, and then we'll go into the detail of each file's content. Just like last week, we're going to drag the foundation folder into the text editor. You'll see over to the left, there's several folders within it. We have the index.html file, where all your HTML will go. We have our CSS folder, which has an app.css file. This is where your custom CSS will be. We have the foundation.css file. This is the default foundation stylings. And then a foundation.min.css file, which we'll go over what that does in a bit. We also have our JavaScript folder, which inside of that has a vendor folder and an app.js file. Again, the app.js is where you'll put all your custom JavaScript. And within the vendor folder, this is all the default JavaScript. So we have our foundation.js, our foundation.min.js, our jQuery.js, and our what-input.js for accessibility. But the most important file or files that you'll be messing with are the index.html and all of the app.css or app.js files, because that's where you'll be putting in your own personal code. So let's dive into what each of these do individually, starting with the index.html file. So the very top, we have a head section. And the head is where we keep all the metadata, style sheet links, and web font links um, so that that stuff can render properly. This is more informational um, about the site than, it's, than anything. So the body will show the contents of the site for everyone to see, but the head is more just information about the site. We have some HTML links that are doc types that tell the, the browser what language it's speaking. So HTML, specifically HTML5, um, which is the most up-to-date, and it uses semantic naming for the sections. And then within the head section, you'll see some metadata tags, the most important one here is probably the viewport. Um, this is what allows for responsive design to happen on your site. So do not delete this, whatever you do. Then we have our title, which you're going to want to name, you know, whatever your site is. And then we have some links to style sheets. The first one being the foundation.css, which is the default style sheet. And the one right below that is the app.css. The reason they're in this order is because they're cascading, meaning the last one overrides everything before it. This is important because all of your custom CSS, you want to override the default styling. Also in between these is where you would add any additional CSS style sheet links that you have for whether it be um, different uh, web fonts or different icon fonts, anything like that would go in between these. So the head is closed at that point, and then we have the body. And you'll see a lot of content here. You're like, that's weird, what is it there? Well, we have a lot of example content. And we'll take a look. So if you right click on the page itself, the index.html, and you click open in browser, it will open up what that page's contents look like. And here you'll see all this example content. Now you won't keep this here, but we like to give you a quick overlook of everything that's provided. At the very end of the index.html file, right before the body tag end, you're going to see these JavaScript file links. The reason these are at the bottom is because it's going to help with load time. If they were up in the head, all these interactions would need to load fully before anything else is seen on the page, which can make it look like nothing's loading, and you certainly don't want that. So always keep these at the bottom, and don't delete them when you delete all this example content in the middle. All right, let's head over to the CSS folder. We'll talk about that in more detail. So we have the foundation.css file, and this is all the default styles for foundation, like I said. The reason we provide this is so that you can look through and find what different styles are being used for different things. So you can see that there are some 
default styles for H1, where the font size is two eames, and here's the margin. So you wouldn't edit anything here. You would actually go over to the app.css file um, to, to change what that would look like. So let's do that right now. Where was that H2 or H1? So let's take this. I'm going to copy it over here. I'm going to change this to, let's say, four. Let's change this color to red. And it's save. Save that. Let's see what that looks like in the browser. Got to refresh. And ta-da! Now the top is red. It's that easy. Yay! So that's where you would find all those default styles to override. Below that is the foundation.min.css. So what is a min? This is a minified file. It's uglifying the file right above it. It's all the same content, but all the white space has been taken out so it renders and loads quicker in the browser. When this comes into play, you're actually not ever gonna really do anything in this because obviously it's not legible with human eyes. Um, you're gonna go over to the index.html when you're ready to push it out to production um, or any of the HTML files that you'll have and you're gonna change in the head this link right here, foundation.css. will now become foundation.min.css, and that will help things load faster. Let's go into the JavaScript folder. So you'll see in this vendor folder under the JavaScript folder, we have the foundation.js. Again, same concept as the CSS folders. This is where all the default JavaScript for foundation is held. The only time you'll be in this is when you're trying to find what that default is, and then when you finally want to overwrite it, you're going to go over to the app.js file. This is where all of your custom JavaScript goes. Then we have the foundation.min.js file. Again, same thing. It's been uglified, and we've removed all of the spacing and tapping so that it can load faster. Once you're ready for production, you will also go to all of the HTML files you have, and change over that link at the very bottom of each page to min.js. Then we have the jQuery file. jQuery is, is a dependency of foundation, so that means that foundation needs this to function, so do not delete this. JavaScript, or jQuery, is a very fast and small feature-rich JavaScript library, uh, which we use to manipulate the HTML elements on your page after they're rendered by the browser. Uh, this creates the interactivity when you do like a hover state or you click on components. So it's very important to keep. Then we have the whatinput.js. And this is an accessibility JavaScript plugin. It keeps um, those blue borders that pop up around elements hidden until the keyboard is used. And like I said, the app.css file, or sorry, the app.js file is where you keep all of the custom JavaScript that you have. So we're there's this line of initialization code. So you would put everything that you, that you have customized below that. All right, great. So how do you start working in foundation? Well, let's add an extra page just to see how that works. So over here on the left side, you're gonna click on the main folder, right click, new file, and let's name this command S, page two dot html. Don't forget the end. That's very important so that it knows that it's an HTML file. Now this page is blank. So what are we to do? Well, let's go over to our index.html page. At this point, you'll probably have deleted all of this content in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for us, except I'm just not gonna delete this header so we can see the difference, but you would delete this as well. And I'll just do that now, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna bring it over here. And this is kind of like the boilerplate for each page. So you want this in every single page. And then you'll put your custom content in the middle every time. Hooray. There it is. And like I showed you, when you wanna view this in the browser, and let's just bring this back here. When you want to view this in the browser, you're just going to command save, right click the page, and then open in browser. Amazing. And then lastly, changing our CSS default styles. 
Again, that's where you'll do it in this folder. I already did it with H1, I did the color. But just to show you again, let's change it to blue. You're gonna refresh the page or else you won't see anything. And ta-da, it is blue, hooray. So now that we've gone over all of our um, file structures and how to add pages and how to customize our CSS, let's talk about a few resources that are gonna help you code faster. So if you head over to foundation.zerb.com, there are a lot of resources that are gonna help making coding so much easier on you. Um, first, we have our kitchen sink, and this shows you all the pre-made styles and components available in our docs. And it's all contained in one page, so you can just scroll and see everything available. We have accordion menu, badges, breadcrumbs, buttons, callouts, drill downs, so many things. Just keep going. <laughs> so yeah, so there's a lot of already default things that you can use, pre-made styles that will be really helpful in speeding up the whole coding process. We also have building blocks. As we speak, the site is actually being updated, so it might look completely different when, when you go to it, but know that it's all uh, reorganized and structured to help you uh, navigate it better. Um, these are what building blocks are. These are smaller bits of HTML, CSS, and sometimes JavaScript that can, that can be used to build your site. So building blocks are modular, meaning they can be plugged into your existing project without affecting um, any of the existing styles. So you want to do an article card or a drop-down menu animation. All of these are available to easily just copy and paste over to your website. We also have templates. And these are fully laid out pages that you can use um, as is, or you can modify it to fit your own needs. So think of these as a structure or a functionality that you can customize with CSS. You can see some very simple layouts that you can easily uh, download, and then you can also see some demos for them. And then lastly, we have this themes page, which actually has a lot in it. It's very, uh, the, ter the terminology for themes is kind of broad. So um, basically they can be pre-styled templates that include functionality with JavaScript, JavaScript, or they can be um, starter themes that are blank, but provide you with the structure to build on top of another system, like uh, content management systems or WordPress. So we have add-ons here with HTML templates, font icons, responsive tables, stencils, we have a list of tools of Angular. All of this stuff is um, available and open source for you to use. So take a look through these links and see what, how you can use them. Okay, great. You just learned the foundation folder file structure, how to add pages, and how to override our pre-made CSS, along with some great resources to help you code faster. Next week, we're gonna go over building your site and using the foundation grid. In case you want to learn more about Foundation, though, and learn some awesome tips and tricks that we here use at Zerve on Foundation, check out the link below for our Intro to Foundation course. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and Yeti gets some wonderful allergy medicine. <sighs> Till next time, a ciao.